Image editing is daunting, especially if you're just starting out. If you've seen my other videos on Luminar Neo, you know how powerful the software is. In this video, I'm gonna check in on the latest updates, see how it's improved, and show you three different ways to edit your images from the easiest to more advanced. First thing you wanna do is make sure you've got the newest version of Luminar Neo. So we're gonna go up here in the upper left and go down to help and about. And the version we're talking about today is 1.24. Now, depending on if you are subscribing to the perpetual updates with Luminar Neo, or if you bought a one-time license and haven't upgraded, you may not see all of these features that I'm going to show you. The first thing uh, that I wanted to share with you as far as uh, an improvement update that I think is really good, that they've really done a good job with, is the Atmosphere AI, specifically fog. So I'm going to this image of this tree that I took, um, this forced scene. So we're going to click on it, we're going to go into Edit. And over here on the Edit panel, we're going to scroll all the way down here to we find Atmosphere AI and fog is the default. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the lightness at 100, but we're just gonna mess with this amount. And the important thing, it used to be, it just made the whole image kind of um, white. And what they've done is they've adjusted the, the depth mask on it, and it does really nice. So we're gonna show you, as we, improve, as we um, up this fog, notice how it recognizes what the subject is, this tree here in the front, but everything behind it, that fog just starts to fill in. And if you push it all the way, it gets, obviously, I think most sliders in any software, if you go all the way to 100, it's kind of going like to 11, you just shouldn't do it. Um, it's a little much, but we can back that off some. And from, you know, from the default of zero, it's a big, big difference, and it looks really natural. You can also adjust the depth. You can actually bring it in front of the tree. So if we adjust this depth, you can see how that it's starting to move forward in the frame. And that's a really great update that they've made. These next couple of things I'm gonna show you very, very quickly are just new features that give you a little bit more functionality and a little more flexibility. If you go under File, you can see preferences. And one of the things they've added for the catalog is to clear this cache size. And if your catalog starts running a little bit slow, you can clear that cache, free up a bunch of space, and it should zip things right along. The other thing is that they've added to the export. If you say new export, they give you a new option here of a DNG. So now you can export as a digital negative, which is Adobe's proprietary, not proprietary, but Adobe's version of a raw file, a digital negative. So now I'm going to show you three different ways to edit your images from very, very simple to a little bit more advanced. The first way we're going to do it, so we're going to take this image that I shot in the gorge uh, on a last week on a workshop. I'm going to go to edit and bring it in. As you can see, it's exposed for the sky. So my foreground is extremely dark. So what I need to do right off the bat is, is I need to, to bring this up. But let's say you are, you're a beginner, you don't really know where to start. Well, we're going to start with Luminar Neo's Enhance AI because it's pretty good just to get started. So we're going to click on that. And then if we hit Accent AI, and then we just bring this up. And that looks really good. Notice how it kept the sky intact 100%. It recognized that my foreground was really dark and the sky looked pretty good. So it didn't do anything to the sky, but it just brought that foreground up, which is really, really, that's just smart. And then the sky enhancer, I would probably maybe just touch on that a little bit. I wouldn't go too far because my sky was already dramatic and it was looking really good. And so if you only did two sliders in Luminar Neo for beginning edit, that's where I would start. This next method to edit your images is a little more advanced, but it sticks to basically just one panel. So we're gonna to go to the Develop Raw in Essentials. And Luminar Neo has this new button that's called Auto Adjust. 
and it's a good start. Again, if you're a beginner or you're not sure what to do, this will help you kind of point you in a direction. So we're gonna click the auto adjust. It's gonna think for a minute and it's done. It was pretty quick. So where do we go from here? Now I am gonna tell you that method one and method two is not gonna give you the best results. It's just a way to get you started. If you want to create the best results, it's gonna take the most time and the most effort to learn the advanced methods. But we all start somewhere and this is where we're starting. In the develop raw panel, we're going to make some more adjustments to this. We're not gonna do, like I say, we're gonna keep it very simple and we're maybe gonna raise our shadows a little bit more to get a little bit more detail, maybe even uh, overall exposure a little bit, I think. And contrast is gonna help. Anytime that you're dropping those shadows and, or raising those shadows and dropping those highlights, you're gonna lose contrast in your image in a big way. And so adding some back always, always helps. So that looks pretty good. I can even adjust the contrast just a little bit more. If you go too far, it gets really crunchy. And again, 100 is like 11, just don't, just don't go there. So somewhere around in there I think is okay. So now we're gonna look at the third way, which is using all of the power of Luminar Neo to come up with the best possible image that we can using our example that we have here. So this is unedited virtual copy, and we're gonna do the same things. Again, we're gonna build on what we've already done. So we're gonna go back to Enhance AI, and we're just gonna crank this, probably not quite as far as we did in the other ones, because we're gonna, we're gonna be a little bit more subtle. And that Sky Enhancer, I'm not even gonna to touch that one. And once we got that done, we're gonna to go to Develop. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Auto Adjust again. And it's starting to blow out my sky a little bit. I'm not digging that, although I do like, my foreground is not looking too bad. So what we need to do at this point is we need to lower the brightness in our sky, but not touch anything else. So in order to just target the sky, we're gonna to have to let Luminar Neo make a mask using its AI to basically grab that sky. Under the develop, we want to target the sky only, so we're going to go to masking, and we're going to say mask AI. At this point, it's going to do its thing, it's going to analyze the image, and it's going to basically come back with three or however many subjects or portions of the image that it can, it can uh, discern. So we have sky, we're going to click on sky, and it does a pretty good job. It didn't get all the clouds, unfortunately, but I don't think that's gonna hurt us too much because we're not gonna make any really dramatic changes to it. We're gonna go back to adjustments now that we've got our sky selected. And this time, notice if I take and drop the exposure all the way, the only thing that's happening is it's, it's targeting the sky specifically. So we want to just maybe tone it down just the very, very smallest amount. But the big thing are these areas in here. So that's gonna be our highlights. We're gonna drop those if we go all the way. And again, I'm really not worried about this. This is where the sun was. It was behind some clouds. It was extremely, extremely bright right there. It's the way it looked in real life. And I'm not trying to bring detail back where there wasn't any, but I am looking at some texture and detail in these areas over here on the sides. And again, I think if I go all the way to there, it's a little too much. This starts to look a little fake. You can see the hard line around where the sun is really, really bright, and that's just not even possible with your naked eye. So I wanna bring that, looking at this area right here, to a point that I think looks realistic. And that's probably gonna be around there, something like that. The next step is gonna to be to introduce a little bit more light in our, on our subject. And we wanna draw attention to that beautiful lupin that is in the foreground and is the subject of the image. So to do that, we're gonna underdevelop still, we're living here, is masking, and we're gonna do a radial gradient. And from here, we're just gonna click and drag, and we're gonna make a radial gradient over our flowers like that. So once we have that, we go to adjustments, and then we can bring that up 
So now that we've got our image pretty much sorted, we want to just take care of just a couple of last minute things. And one of these that is very distracting are these people that are hiking on the trail to the right of the, these, uh, the beautiful loop in the subject there. So let's remove those. We can try, now Luminar has two different ways to erase. They have the erase that's built in the essentials panel. And then for some reason, you have to go back to the catalog up here at the top in order to get to the gen erase, which is their AI based uh, erase. I would like to see Luminar put erase and gen erase, just make it one thing in order. You can maybe put a checkbox if you want to use gen erase, but put it here and not outside in the catalog, outside of the develop, the edit modules where all of the editing takes place. It just doesn't seem like a, a logical place to put it and it's confusing. So we're going to try just the regular erase in the edit panel uh, in the essentials panel over here. So we're going to click erase and uh, we're going to just draw around our, our hikers that are back there that are photobombing the that are photobombing the image. And once we got those, we'll click erase. We'll see how it does. And as you can see, it didn't do a great job. It actually has, it put some more blue jacket back in it. But you can see this erase did not do a good job. So we can reset the panel just by clicking on that little reset or undo button there. And here's our people again. Let's try it one more time and see if it does a better job. If not, we're gonna go to the generase that does the uh, AI and let's try erase. And again, it just didn't do a good job. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo that. So we're going to go to catalog. And this time we're going to click on generate under generative tools. And we're going to zoom in so we can see it as soon as it finishes loading. And we're going to make our brush a little bit bigger. Use the bracket keys and we're going to paint over our hikers. And that last one right there, and we're going to say erase. So this time it's reaching out to the cloud, to the internet to figure this out. And let's hope we get a better result. And it, it is a better result. It's not great, but it's way, way better. And it's in the background far enough. I don't think it's going to matter. We're going to try and get rid of these hikers that are way back here. These three little blob squatches and hit erase and get rid of those back there. And that did okay as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say save and we're going to pull this back into uh, edit and take a look at it from this vantage point. In this vantage point, it looks fine. That'll, that'll work. So that's going to wrap up this week's video and my update on Luminar Neo. They've made some really nice improvements on it. It continues to evolve. It continues to get better. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.